Good evening, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to talk to you about your upcoming work and your upcoming uh, premiere of your, of your incredibly special composition, The Mass, um, on the 19th of March. I wonder, could you tell us a little bit about it um, and about why you're having this performance at this time and also why you're having the performance in this particular location? Well, I wrote the Mass originally a good number of years ago. And then about two years ago, I decided around the, around the beginning of COVID, I actually decided to do another version of the Mass for uh, organ, church organ with choir. And my record company sent it to Christoph at First Congregational Church here in Los Angeles. He is, he is their principal organist and he liked it. And it seemed to them like a good project to undertake during the pandemic because they were doing these virtual services every Sunday where the choir would all be singing at home um, and it would look like a Zoom call coming, but it was the choir singing, you know, for the church services. So last year, um, yes, around this time last year for Lent, they started recording the mass and we did one movement each week for 16 weeks. And at the end of that 16 weeks, we had a full album recorded and we, we released it. But it, it was always our intention to have a premiere performance of this then when the pandemic was over and people could congregate again. Uh, and, and it's wonderful. Having been at that particular church, it's an amazing venue with uh, an amazing community. So it's an event I'm really looking forward to on the 19th of March at 7.30. And obviously the tickets are available for sale now. Yes, they are. Um, first church, um, first congregational church, Los Angeles, go to their website and the tickets are available there. And it's also being held under the umbrella of Ireland Week. So tickets are also available through the Ireland Week uh, website. Um, and yeah, it's, it's an event I think not to be missed. And one of the, the guests that you have at this particular um, event is Martin Sheen. So how did he become involved in the project? Well, I, th I think we're all aware that Martin Sheen is a deeply spiritual person and uh, a, a very, very good person, a person with a great social conscience. And he, he, you know, his record is to speak out in these issues, important issues, and really put his neck on the block. I believe he's been arrested many times at various protests throughout the years. And um, he's bringing something very special to it as well. He is, he is going to recite some uh, poems and sayings from various faiths. There will be um, a poem by the Persian poet Rumi and um, one by the Indian mystic Tagore and um, the Buddhist uh, spiritual leader Thich Nhat Hanh. And also there will be a poem by W.B. Yeats too, because it is an Irish event as well. So it'll, it'll be a very much an interfaith uh, event, but with the Latin mass at the core. It, it sounds beautiful. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. Um, but obviously this is not your first work. Um, you've been composing for many years. You've been in Los Angeles for many years. What brought you to Los Angeles first? Well, I, I had been working in Ireland as a composer for, for a good number of years, and I just felt like I needed to try something more ambitious. I, I, had, um, I had a piece in Ireland that was very successful when I was living in Ireland called The Children of Lair, and it was, it was number one in the Irish classical charts. And, you know, some people in America were aware of my music, and I just felt I, if I came here, I would have a new opportunity. So... I went from being a big fish in a small pond to a small fish in a big pond. And um, here I am. <laughs> well, I, I think you're, you're, you're a big fish in this big pond as well. Your work is very well known and really well respected Thank you. By, by so many and, and brings joy to, to so many. I'm thinking particularly of your work and the aria for the film Hannibal. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Well, the... Actually, that actually that happened very shortly after I arrived here, within the first year. And 
the movie Hannibal was set, the first half of the movie was set in Florence. And Hannibal Lecter was the curator at a Dante library, the Capone library in Florence. And there was a scene in the movie where he goes to an opera and the libretto of the opera is a poem by Dante. And Hans Zimmer knew that I specialized in choral music. So he asked me to do it, especially seen as the scene was gonna be shot in two weeks. So I had very little time to write it. Um, but it's one of those things, there was an opportunity that came to me and um, everybody loved the aria. And, um, you know, it was a huge, huge boost to my career. And it also brought me more into opera because I've now completed the opera from which that aria subsequently came in a sense, because I've written a full opera about the Italian poet Dante, and it will feature the poem um, Vita Cormeian as well. That's amazing. That's fantastic. And and yeah, you're, you're, I'm, I'm not surprised that everybody loved, loved the aria. How did you move from sort of, you know, the composition of music that was very much influenced by sort of your Irish mythology to, to something like that? Well, when I'm writing music, I, I, I always feel that music works best when it's part of something bigger and and music that has some context, I feel, speaks to an audience better than just, um, well, symphony number eight or whatever, you know, if it's got some context. And even if it doesn't have words, if it's about something, you know, like even the, the Russian composition pictures at an exhibition, you, 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 it's descriptive. And so most of my compositions involve choir and there's usually some type of a narrative. It's about something, whether that's the children of Lear, the mass or, or the opera Dante. And that works best for me as a composer. Would you attribute any of that to, to your Irish uh, background? Since we are known as a nation of storytellers, so that desire to tell stories through your music, do you think it's related to that? Um, I think it could very well be. And um, certainly, um, I hadn't thought about that now until you suggested it, but that sounds like, um, that sounds like a, reason, a reasonable thing to suppose, yeah. Uh, the Children of Lear was a story that I, that I learned when I was growing up as a child. And I was surprised that nobody had ever taken the story and you know, set it to music. And it seemed an obvious thing to me. And actually Dante has never really been set to music either. So um, I suppose it takes an Irishman to tell the story. <laughs> It's a wonderful yeah. way of a wonderful way of putting it. And yeah. with with the the mass, what was the desire? What was the impetus behind that? Oh, well, I suppose the mass is the most common libretto in classical choral music. It's been set so many times to music, that same text by Beethoven with the Mises and Solemnus, um, Mozart's great mass in C minor, Bach's mass in B minor, all of the great composers have written settings of it. And then the mass uh, went out of favor in the 19th century. And it happened that an Irish composer had actually never written a setting of the mass, a full symphonic setting of the mass. So I thought I should rectify that omission and do one. And, um, so this is um, this is the Irish, um, the Irish Latin Mass in a sense. And and you have done so beautifully. As I said, those those who of us who are lucky enough to be to have got tickets for for the Mass and uh, on the nineteenth are are in for a, an incredible performance and a really special special treat. One of the things that I know that you're also really passionate about is about you know sharing your knowledge and sharing your experience. And I know you've been working on the development of a film music school to set up in Clare Morris this summer. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, in Clare Morris, County Mayo. I, I was born there and I left there when I was five. But I've always supported Mayo, uh, the Mayo football team, 
which has broken my heart <laughs> throughout the years. But and, and yeah, that's where I'm so from. As a cabin woman, my heart is even more broken. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, you're only from one place. I'm from Clare Morris, and I did a concert there about 10 years ago, and they welcomed welcome me back to the town and my family. So it's a way of me giving something back to the town. We're hoping that this will be the first year of this summer school. On the Friday night, which is the 29th of April, there will be a concert. And then the following day, I will give um, a workshop on film comp composition. And Michael Dawson, uh, you know, who was the choir master at Maynooth, he's a great choir master, incredible. And he studied here at UCLA too. And um, he's going to do the, the workshop with me and he will have an emphasis on choral music and choral composition. So we will be doing that ourselves, but we're, we're hoping it will be the first year and that, will, that it will keep going and gather pace. Oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure this is a, is a, great, a great demand for the skills and knowledge that you can impart to people, particularly given your incredible experience and your own incredible work. But I, I have one final question for you, Patrick. Mm. Um, what, what is it that you are hoping that people get out of the performance of the mass? What kind of reaction would you like people to have? Well, the mass itself will be a multifaceted occasion. It's going to, um, in one respect, mark the end of the pandemic, we hope. And um, mm. we will also be um, celebrating the centenary of Irish independence. But above all, it's a, it should, we would like it to be a coming together of people and in a spiritual context. And, um, you know, you've been at the church with me. You, you very kindly came to the church a few Sundays ago. And you, you, you know what these people are about. They're, um, they're, they're so open and so liberal and they, they welcome everybody. And the door's closed to nobody, even, even Irish Catholics are let in. And, um, you know, they welcome people of, of any faith and no faith to come to that church and, and, um, and just have a gathering, a human gathering with people. So um, that's really what the event is about. And um, I hope people just have a good time and they enjoy the experience of the, this church as well. This church actually has the second largest uh, church organ in the world. It's massive. And the choir Laude are an absolutely an amazing choir. So it should be a really beautiful spiritual evening. And with Martin Shing reading the poetry and the music and these fantastic people, I just hope it's a great evening and, and a special Irish evening as well, above all. I, I have absolutely no doubt it, it will be. And as I said, yeah, it's a really wonderful, it's a really special place. And, and there's a gorgeous sentiment to be able to mark the end of the pandemic, hopefully, fingers crossed, and the coming together, that, that sense of community. And as you said, yeah, this is a special, special year for Ireland. So it's also the 50th anniversary of our uh, signing of the Treaty of Accession to the EU, which, uh, you know, we're all part of that community and that part yes. of that family incredibly important particularly right now and um, so it's going to be a, a lovely 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 event patrick thank you so much for talking with me today and um, really looking forward to seeing you in person on the 19th of march um, and to hearing the full concert uh, of the thank, thank you marcella it's been a pleasure <laughs>